Episode 68 of Pokemon Horizons just aired, marking the beginning of the brand new story arc, Rayquaza Rising. As always, I'll be reviewing that episode tomorrow, and trust me, I have a lot to say, the episode was crazy. But right now in this video, we have to talk about the brand new opening theme and the brand new ending theme too. Cause man, the music went crazy and the plot reveals went even crazier. So let's start with the new opening theme. The opening theme started with Liko, Roy, and Dot watching as Lucius' shiny Rayquaza soars through the sky above them, and then they begin chasing Rayquaza, obviously representing the journey they're about to go on to get Rayquaza on their side. We then got flashbacks of Liko, Roy, and Dot at the beginning of their journeys. Dot is sad on her computer in the airship, Roy is sad watching Rayquaza leave, Liko is sad after losing her first battle, but then Liko reaches for the sky with everything in black and white around her, and suddenly the starter Pokemon dash by her, appearing in front of the other rising Volt Tackle and everything turns colourful. This was a really fantastic sequence, dude. It really represented how unhappy Liko was with life and the world before meeting her Pokemon and joining the Rising Vault Tacklers. They figuratively and literally brought colour to her world. So special, man. And of course, Roy and Dot are there too. We then see several shots of Kitakami. Carmine or Carmine or Carbon Dioxide, however you say her name, she's with her Pokemon at the shrine. And sadly, there's no Kieran in sight anywhere, which makes me really gutted, man. I really hope the anime doesn't do him dirty. He's one of my favourite characters ever. Then we see Briar holding the Scarlet Book, and we see Perrin and her Growlithe taking photos of Lucius's Cleavor. So yeah, I'm guessing that means that Perrin's story in the games of her trying to find and take pictures of Blood Moon Ursa Luna, I'm guessing that's being swapped for Cleavor in the anime. I'm completely fine with that, dude. It makes a lot of sense, you know? It's a really fun way to link her to Liko and Roy's story with Lucius. It would have been really cool to see Blood Moon Ursa Luna in the anime, though. It would have been ferocious, bro. Next up, we see the Explorer's admins looking as cool as ever, and Amethio appears in a whirlwind separate from them, representing how he was fired from the team. And then the Explorer's theme continues, with Gibeon appearing and using the power of Rakurium in his hands. I can't wait for Gibeon to have a bigger role in this story arc, dude. And this is where it gets insane. Gibeon's shiny Zygarde in its 50% form appears. Dang, it looks cool. And what's even more crazy is that Roy Dot and Freed are battling it, bro. Liko, Roy Dot and Freed versus Gibeon's 50% form shiny Zygarde. If we get this in the anime, that's gonna be bonkers, man. And clearly the opening theme is suggesting that it will happen. And then Liko throws five Pokeballs up into the air. That could finally be more proof that our heroes are finally gonna catch more Pokemon in this story arc, after not catching any in Terrastal debut. I'm so excited, man. And Terrapagos comes out of one of Liko's Pokeballs? Could that maybe be hinting that Liko is gonna catch Terrapagos after all? Terrapagos transforms into its Terrastal form and we get several shots of our heroes battling Zygarde. And then what's even and more insane is that Rayquaza appears in the sky and smashes into Zygarde. We could actually end up getting a Lucius as Rayquaza versus Gibeon Zygarde battle in this arc. The ultimate shiny off. The Dragon God of the Sky versus the Dragon God of the Earth. Crazy bro. And Rayquaza is glowing green in this opening theme. It kind of looks like a regular Rayquaza, but I'm pretty sure it's still Lucius's one, you know? And then Terrapagos transforms into its stellar form from the Scarlet and Violet DLC. I can't wait to see how that unfolds. Folds. I thought it could only do that in Area Zero, man. Could that mean we're going to Area Zero? Or maybe I'm just wrong, I don't know. It would be really cool if when Terrapagos transforms into its stellar form, it loses control, and then Liko, Roy, and Dot have to battle it in like a big raid battle, you know? Similar to what happened in the Scarlet and Violet DLC. That'd be really awesome, man. Then we got shots of each of Lucius's Pokemon in the sky, and seeing a flying Lapras really made me laugh for the reason that Kuro said in my Discord server. Bro, the last time we saw a flying Lapras was in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, my favourite series of all time. That's how you know this story arc is going to be peak, bro. And then we got a visual representation of the rivalry between Amethio and Spinel. I'm really glad that that's going to continue, man. I really want to see Amethio getting revenge. And next up, we got the most insane, intriguing shot of the entire opening theme. The one that I think everyone's going to be talking about. We got a glimpse to the past, where we saw the ancient adventurer Lucius and the main villain Gibeon travelling together as friends. So once upon a time, a hundred years ago, Lucius and Gibeon were travelling companions. That's crazy, dude. And what's even more interesting is there's a mysterious unknown third person with them. And that third person is holding Terrapagos. 
Currently, we have absolutely no idea who the third person is. This is the first time they've ever been shown, but she looks to be a woman to me, so I'm gonna assume she's a woman. Some people are theorizing that she could be Roy's ancestor, so he's linked into the story too, or maybe she could be Lucius's wife, or maybe just like a friend they had. But dude, the fact that she's holding Terrapagos is so crazy to me. She has to be really, really, really important, man. And this makes me think that maybe she could be Terrapagos's original trainer. She could have been the one to introduce Terrapagos to Lucius. And maybe that could be why Lucius never caught Terrapagos. Terrapagos already had a trainer, this unknown woman. So if she was Terrapagos's original trainer and now she's absolutely nowhere to be found, what if something huge happened to her in the past? What if she was like unalived or something? And then maybe afterwards Terrapagos sided with Lucius, while Gibeon turned into a villain. That'd be so crazy, dude. I can totally see it happening. Let me know who you think this mysterious trainer is below. The opening theme then ends with the brave Olivine airship flying over what looks to be Area Zero. And dude, that alongside Stella Terrapagos appearing definitely teases that maybe we're finally getting the Area Zero storyline. I'd love that, man. The final shot is Zaliko, Roy, Dot, and Mona and Penny having a fun group photo together in front of the Naranja Academy. What a wonderful and heartfelt shot to end the opening theme. I love this group so much dude. So yeah, the opening theme was bonkers, man. So insane. The animation was incredible. The plot reveals for future episodes were amazing. The song itself was great and so hype and catchy. You guys have got to go and check it out yourself, you know? And now let's quickly spend a little time talking about the ending theme, but not quite as much time, because it's not quite as crazy as the opening theme was. In the ending theme, we basically got a bunch of shots of Liko and Roy and Dot and their Pokemon doing different dances. They're in their TikTok era, you know? It was funny and silly, but but not anything that amazing. We did get some beautiful shots of our heroes and their Pokemon at the beginning of their journeys, Liko and Sprigatito at the Indigo Academy, Roy and Fuecoco on Roy's Island, Dot and Quaxley at Lavincia. Can I just say it really healed my heart to get one final shot of Dot's Quaxley, man. I miss you, little guy. We then see Sad Liko followed by her Pokemon evolving, and then some fun shots of the entire group, and then all of them jump in the air in a high school musical kind of manner. The 2000s kid in me loves that, man. And my favourite shot of the ending theme is Roy and his Pokemon wearing their funky sunglasses. I really love these three, dude. They're such dorks, you know? A shot of Nido Thing and her Pokemon with Dot as her shadow appears next, which is a really fire shot. And then what's crazy is we see the other rising Volt Tacklers and all of their Pokemon on the Brave Asagi airship, and then we see Silhouette of their past before they joined the crew. Ludlow is the superhero, Murdoch is the chef, Freed is the researcher, Orla is the engineer, but the real standout, what's really crazy, is Molly and her nurse design appears. And it really feels like a Nurse Joy kind of design, you know? She has Nurse Joy hair. That's insane, man. I can't wait to see the design properly in the future. I really want to delve into her past a bit more. And yeah, that's the end of the ending theme. So yeah, overall, Horizons hit us with two great theme songs today. The opening theme was fire, had so many cool reveals and a great song. The ending theme was pretty fun too and had a few little reveals in there. I just really love to see how much work the staff are putting into every part of Horizons. I know people are going to be theorizing about this opening theme for a long time to come. Seems like we've got a great story arc ahead of us, bro. Let me know your thoughts on the songs and the visuals in the comments, and also be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed my breakdown. My episode review should release tomorrow and I have a lot to say, dude, so don't miss it. On that note, thank you all so much for watching, and best Best wishes until we meet again.